All right, starting the snow. Got the trailer hooked up here. Got about a 30 minute drive. All right, so we're supposed to get a bunch of snow coming up this week. So I figured why not go pick up something that we can move the snow with. So we're on our way to go look at that four wheeler. Has a plow. I guess the guy said it like lost spark at some point and it just sat there. So it's been sitting for a while, he said. Um, he said he went through the carburetor last year on it. Um, but he said he never got to run. So we'll see when we get there. It looks pretty crappy, but I think it has some life left. It's a 4x4, so we got him down to like 450 bucks for it, and um, we can probably go lower. So we'll get there, and uh, we'll see if we can make a deal. What's the story on it? Uh, last time I went to go use it, it just didn't want to start. Okay. Uh, it installed, didn't want to start back up. Got it going, parked it, went to go use it again. So it's like intermittent spark kind yeah, of? Yeah, I just came out and I found that uh, the spark plug wire broke through from the cooling fan. So it may just be a coil wire. Oh, oh yeah, it looks like the cooling fan was hitting it. Yep. Doesn't it? So, but the only other thing I know is the switch is bad in here, so the I went in here and overrided the switch so the four-wheel drive would still work. Oh, okay. Because when you put it into gear, the light would turn on, right? It wouldn't turn on. Oh, okay. So, so now it, okay. yeah, it wouldn't let the hub lock. Okay. So 4x4 so. four four works pretty good? Yeah. Okay. I think one of them was intermittent. I think it's got a bad wire going to the, the electric solenoid okay. or the switch for the hub. Okay. But other than that, it, it ran really good. We just beat it up around here. Yeah. I used it one winter, to, the first winter I got it to plow all this. But then, uh, Switch locked up, and then I put a different winch and stuff on it, and, and it was all I had for a controller was a remote control. Oh, okay. It was a winch I had on my snowmobile trailer, but then uh, I couldn't get the the lugs off the winch to hook up the wires. Oh, okay. I put it together, but then I was gonna fix some stuff with it. And, so the winch just sits right here, it looks like. <laughs> yeah, the bracket. Is that mounting plate pretty strong in there? Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I mean, it's a little loose now, but I, like I said, I was, I was in there and took that one out. This is still here, this is still here. Just needs a lever to go down to okay. the plow. For Does the, the plow work on there with the winch, if you were to buy a new winch for it? Yeah, yeah. Okay. That's the way it was when I got it. So that hooks up with two pins in yeah, the back there? Pins. Okay. And then the uh, winch cable hooks up on right here. Okay. And then uh, it pivots as well, too. How long has it been sitting? Uh, just this last summer. Okay. I did check it. It still pulls over fine. Got okay. All right. I bought it from a friend of mine because he went and got the, the Cub Cadet with a bucket so he didn't need it. And okay. Bought it from a friend of mine just to play around with for the kid. and the wife to get used to it because she had never ridden and used it like I said I used it out here for a season for plowing and they didn't even want to reimburse me for my gas because we just rent here. Oh okay. So I said no I'm not doing that anymore. <laughs> I don't blame you. <laughs> I mean, still got a good compression. Yeah it seems good. Yeah it seems pretty good. And before I got it from my buddy it went through it and greased and oiled everything all with you joints. And... Cool. I think I, I literally, you know, one season out of it. Front tires don't hold air all the time, but like how many how many hours do you think they hold air for? Well, it'll be a couple days. Oh, okay. I think they're just slow rim leaks. You said you went through the carb went last through, year. Went through the carb. Uh, what did you find in there? Everything was good. It, it was just a little gummed up. Yeah. Went through it, cleaned it, put new parts kit in it. And okay. And ever since then, after that, it could have sat for a month. Walk out there, pull it two times, and it start right up. Yeah. So, so now it's just a spark issue, basically. Yeah, it looks like this is getting too crappy. The front brake didn't work really work. The back, they did work, but you really had to stand on them. Yeah. <laughs> but it's a 94 or 5 or whatever, and he had nothing really done to it. So yeah. I bought it just for a beater to keep on the property, you know, just for but a little bit of work. It'd be a good four wheeler. Did you say the oil inject injector worked on it? Yes, it did. Okay. So you don't mix the gas at all? No, I did put some mix in it only because that's what I had at the time. Yeah. I was like, all. Oh, I like oh. to put mix in just in case too. Yeah. In you, case the oil pump never know goes if out. That yeah. The pump's gonna go out. Exactly. And that, that was one of the other reasons too, knowing that it was older and. Yeah. That and that's what I had laying around from the boat and stuff. So. 
Yeah, I never trust those pumps. The battery was relatively new and good. I did have a solar um, charger on it. Okay. You know, just a little Harbor Freight thing. Yep. I mean, I haven't tested it, but it's been on there. So I don't know if the battery's still good. It could have froze for a while. Okay. And then you said the starter does not work. Yeah, the starter okay. worked when I got it, and then it just stopped working. I would assume it's probably full of dirt because they put it down on the bottom there. Okay, yeah, it does. And you have to get them out. Yeah, it is. And I figured as long as it started on one or two pulls. Yeah. It wasn't a, you know, it wasn't a requirement. No. It just meant I had to start it for the old lady because she got neck and back issues, so. Yeah. I do have the two side panels that go on okay. here. Cool. And I have an extra cooling fan. It was making noise. Okay. It may have been it hitting that wire. Oh. But I have another good one that I bought from uh, the guy over in Red Granite from Nate. Okay. And it worked, but it was just kind of it was just noisy. Yeah, I can I can hear it hitting the wire when you when you spin it. <laughs> doesn't make any noise. Hard to believe how the response I've had on this. Oh yeah? Yeah, there's been like 10 people. Probably with the snow coming up here. Oh, I mean, I put in there, don't run. Yeah, you know? oh yeah. I mean, I mean, it could be an easy fix. One guy's like, oh, pull the, the black wire on the CDI, it'll probably start. The black wire, is that like an over-rev thing? Or? I, I don't know. Like a, well, it's a little rougher than I imagined. Would you go down any lower on it? I'll take it right now. I'd do four. Four? You wouldn't do 375? Gone today? Yeah. Pretty stuck at four. I mean, okay. With the response I've had on it, I mean. Yeah. I guess it does come with the plow, too. It does come with the plow. I'll give you four for it. That's fine. All right, well, we got the four-wheeler in the back. Guy was pretty nice. We got down from 650 to 400 bucks. And he said it ran last year, so we will see. All right, here it is. The $400 machine. We do have the side panels for it, too. In the truck. Yeah, it's not too bad. Plow's pretty straight. I think it'll clean up pretty good. Check it out, it's snowing pretty good. We're supposed to get, I think a total of 12 inches, so the goal for today is to get this thing running, driving, and plowing. So apparently there's no spark. That's the main issue, I guess. That's what the guy said, at least. Looks like he took off the winch as well. Has all the wires for the winch. But it looks like the winch is missing. It does have the hand control right here. That I'm just gonna take off because I'm not using that. And then it does have a plow, which is pretty nice. It's not all bent up or anything. It's got the little pins for there, so this thing mounts to the back right here. Awesome. It does come with the side panels here. I was hoping it would, otherwise it looks pretty crappy if it's not complete. But uh, it's really not in that bad of shape. It's not horrible. I've seen worse. Looks like the back bumper was hit a couple times. I think that was supposed to be on the front and you put it on the back. Interesting, because the front doesn't have one. Must not fit with the plow on there. This looks like you just put it right on the back there. Very interesting. And there's some melting going on where this was hitting the pipe. Nothing works, so I'm guessing the battery's dead. We'll have to check and see if anything lights up in a second here. Take a look at the air filter here. Take the seat off right away. The seat, I think, will clean up. Looks like it's been sitting outside for a long time. He said only a year, but 
I don't know if I believe that. He said he plowed his whole neighborhood with it. So apparently it did a good job plowing. Back tires actually have some decent tread, so I'm guessing if we get this thing to work, it'll be a decent plowing machine. And then he did say the one wheel, I think he said this wheel right here, wasn't really working for the 4x4, it wasn't engaging. He said there was like a cut wire or something. Let's see if it is cut. Doesn't look cut to me. Maybe this one is. Oh, those aren't cut either. <laughs> Very interesting. Front brake does not work, it doesn't look like. Looks like it needs to be bled. Let's see, maybe it does work. Kinda works. Probably just needs to be bled a little bit more. And then back brake, he says if you really stomp on it, it'll work. But feels like there's nothing there. Yeah, there's no way that's working. Let's see if there's any gas in it. No gas. Alright, I think the first thing we're gonna do is just check out the air box. Make sure uh, no animals are living in there. We don't want any mice uh, flying through the carb here. Well, pretty clean actually. So maybe he actually did. Doesn't look like the carb was apart though. All right, let's hook up a battery to it, see if anything lights up here. All-wheel drive button works. Cool. You can see electric start does not work. He did mention that. Just clicks. Let's see what happens if I cross the solenoid. Just for fun. It's either the starter or the solenoid. If it's clicking, it's usually the starter. Nothing is happening there. So we'll have to work on that. Oh, the lights work. Nice bright light. See, dim, low and high. Cool. And the gauge is lit up. Things are looking up here. Look at that. Neutral light works, high beams work, or maybe it's just the high beam that works. <laughs> Neutral light does not work. Let's turn off the lights and just play around with the shifter, see if the neutral light works here. Not seeing the neutral light turn on. Oh, it's got a tail light too. Tail light's actually working. All right, what we're gonna do is get that spark plug out next, and uh, we're gonna have to turn this thing over by hand. Luckily, there's a pull start. It has good compression, it feels like at least. This 
So, spark plug's up in here. Let's see if I can get to it. It's a hard one to get to. There we go. Let's see, is that the right way? Running a little bit rich, it's pretty black. Doesn't look like he tried to change the plug or anything. So when he was there, so when he was trying to sell me this thing, he said he thinks the fan was hitting the spark plug cable right here, and maybe it damaged it somehow. So that's why he thinks it doesn't have spark. He said he uh, didn't see that before. The fan is just right here. He said that was making noise, so I wonder if it was just hitting that. Well, we'll see. Let's see what happens here. It's really not even grabbing in that boot there. Hmm. See that? It just kind of doesn't do much. Let's see if you've got some spark here. Does she have spark here? Turn this thing on. Nothing. Nothing at all. I'm gonna put some oil down the cylinder. Sounds like it might be a little bit rough in there. Let's get a little oil in there. He says sat for a year outside, so. Nothing. You guys seen any spark here? We're in neutral. Let's see if the lights have to be on. He said he messed with the wiring too. So let's try a new spark plug first. B7ES. Alright, we'll try this plug. Yeah, nothing. So it's not the plug. Next we'll check the spark plug boot. Wire. Oh yeah, it's not even contacting any wire. Look at that. So that could definitely be the problem. I don't see any wire exposed. Do you guys see any wire? So we'll clip that back a little bit. There's like nothing showing. Now we see some wear. So we'll put the boot back on. Just see if we get anything now. I doubt the fix is gonna be that easy. <laughs> Still feels like this spark plug cable has some issues, so we'll see. going on. <laughs> Nothing. So still no spark. Let's see if we can get this gas sink off and take a closer look at that cable.
right now we've got access to everything here. Okay. And all the wires up here. Doesn't look like anything was messed with too much. What I'm gonna do is get off all this junk. All these wires for the winch and everything. Let's get all that bypassed and cut that all out. All right, we've got all this stuff off of here. We probably lost like 10 pounds from all this stuff. How many zip ties can you count? <laughs> but that looks a lot cleaner now on this side. And then the battery is nice and clean now. So everything looks good. All that junk out of here, nice and clean. So now we can start really working on it. We can actually see everything now. All right, so here is the bend in the coil wire. I don't know if that would cause it. It almost feels like it is broken in there. Maybe he was right. Let's cut that open and just see what that wire looks like in there. All right, we've got it on the beeper setting, so put one into the wire in here. And one will just jab right into here. Yep, so that's getting continuity. So unfortunately, there's not a break in the system here. Well, it might be the pickup coil. Definitely could be. So the pickup coil is behind here. So I'll follow these up right here to right here to right here. So these wires look like they go directly into the CDI box, which is right here. Got the brown, got the red and black here. We're gonna test the red and black. See if we're getting any voltage from there. I believe this one should spark. That. And then we'll pull the engine over and just see if this one sparks anywhere on the frame when we ground it out. sparking. Oh! Check this out. This was on off the whole time. <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> Alright. If it has sparked now, that's gonna be crazy. It might have just been the boot the whole time. Oh, we got spark. <laughs> so it was the boot the whole time. That's like a Two second fix. But we've got spark from the the wire at least now, so I know it's now either the boot or the spark plug. <laughs> Cannot believe that was the problem. <laughs> that is something. Oh my god. Look at that spark. Hold it down here so you guys can see it. Wow. Great spark now. Let's see if you guys can see it down here. Look at that. Beautiful. Oh yeah. Nice blue spark. So, it ended up being that wire just was not snipped back enough. Wow. And the button was off. <laughs> All right, so that's a good sign. We've got spark. Let's do a quick compression test on it and see what we're working with for compression. All right. If we have compression, we're gonna be in good shape here. Then we just have to worry about the fuel. All right, throttle open. Throttle works nice. 
So about 135 pounds of compression. Not too bad. At least it's above 100. So compression checks out. Definitely enough compression to run. All right, so to get the box out, there's two bolts right here that have to come out. And then the carb should just pop right out. Pretty easy carb to get out. Make sure that's all cleaned out when we uh, go back in there. Get the slide out. There's a choke off. Those are usually pretty tough to get out. A little gunked up. All right, carburetor is out now. Let's see, uh, I don't know if that oil pump was working too much, too well. We're definitely running premix in it. Looks like there was some gas in it. I think the guy cleaned it. Looks pretty clear. I don't know if that was clean last year. Yeah, maybe. Doesn't look too bad. There's still a little gas in there, you can see. Floats are still moving up and down. A little gunk in there. Definitely not the cleanest carb I've seen, but it's not horrible. Definitely seen worse. All right. There we go. There. Oh yeah, the needle's completely stuck in there. Completely stuck. We're gonna take the seat out too. 155 for the main. It's actually a little bit clogged. Look at that. So good thing we're going through it. All right, and then we've got the pilot down here. That's pretty sticky in there too. I think this guy used ethanol gas. Yeah, pilot's completely clogged. <sighs> yeah, that is completely clogged. Running a 40 pilot. All 
All right, so these have leaking problems a lot, these carbs. And um, a lot of time the culprit is the crush washer. There might be a little screen underneath here too, I can't remember. On these guys, this one looks pretty good actually. It's in the crush washer right here. And if you don't have that, it'll leak the gas. And you'll have a leaky carb. It looks all clean in there, looks good. So we'll blow through this with some compressed air and brake cleaner. Air screw here. So how many turns in? One, two, about two. There's a spring for it. So that was set pretty right. About right. So, all right, and then we'll take apart these floats and clean those up a bit. All right, we've got the carburetor back on, the air box back on, everything's good to go there. Everything's working perfectly. So, we are going to test out the starter now. So, we've got the voltmeter hooked up to the second terminal on the solenoid there. So if I hit the start button and power crosses over to that terminal, we know it's not the solenoid that's bad. It's probably most likely the starter. So let's push the start button and see if we get 12 volts. Turn it on. Yeah, so it's definitely the starter. So power is crossing over the terminal and it's just not spinning the starter. So the starter it's most likely junk on it. So we, we might tackle that a little bit later. All right, we just drained the gas tank. Um, the gas in there didn't look too good. So we're gonna add some fresh pre-mix here, 40 to one. We have a little gas on the cylinder. Let's see what happens now. We have good spark.
All right, cool, fired right up. Sounds pretty good too. So, yeah, not too bad. All right, so I think what we're gonna do is put this thing back together and then test out the four x four. The four x four has to work for plowing. Otherwise, this thing's gonna slip and slide and won't work properly. So we'll take it for a little ride, test it in the snow and see if that four x four is working. Or we could just jack it up and see as well, which we might do that. All right, this thing's kind of just floating here. So let's try to fire it up and see if it moves at all. Watch those front wheels. All right, four by four is not working at all. All right, we're here at the left side over here. So when the four wheel drive button is pressed in, these two wires going down to the hub down here. Those should have 12 bolts going to them. Let's get those off. They look like they were messed with at some point. Got the... There's a brown one and a gray one. I've been taped up, so maybe they came out or something. Looks like they just... Expose the wire there. Hook some alligator clips up to that. And the other wire. Right there. Alright, then we'll hook up the voltmeter and press the all wheel drive button and we'll see what happens. Hopefully, we get 12 volts. Alright, we got our wires hooked up here. Let's turn the machine on. Let's see what we get. Yep, we're getting 12 volts to it. That's weird. Huh. <coughs> or anywhere else. Doesn't look like it. Hmm. So something must be going on. Look like there is any oil in there. Or not much of any. Hmm. Oop, and she dumped right into the oil layer. Guess that was reverse thread. Let that dangle down. Right, now we should be able to slide this off. Oh, it looks pretty clean in there. Got the bearing and the washer. There is some fluid in there. Not much, but there's a little bit. Everything looks really good. Doesn't look like anything was rubbing or anything.
Here's the magnetic plate. Let's see when I turn the machine on. All right, upon further investigation, this wire was just ripped out right there. It wasn't even connected. So we're gonna try to reconnect that to there. And see if that does anything. The other one's connected. So I don't know if we're gonna have enough material to get there, but we'll see how I wanna rip this out. Cause if you rip that out, then it's over. <laughs> so, all right, so that was definitely the problem. I hooked up a alligator clip to that wire to that wire and now look at that that plate you can't take off because the magnet sucked it in see that and then if i turn the key off see the plate moves so well that was the culprit all right we got it back together here and the magnet is working now Get this out of here and get some fluid in there. We're just gonna use transmission fluid. Some pretty thin stuff. filled up all the way. You can see if you tilt it, it'll pour out. So we are good right there. So by jacking this thing up and testing it, there's really no way to see if the wheels are moving because the back wheels have to slip and these have to gain momentum in order for that to work. So um, yeah, it's not gonna, it's not gonna um, move the front wheel if you just jack it up and try the 4x4. So I think this one's fine over here. He said one wheel was not spinning as much as the other one. So I'm guessing that was that one. So we will see. We'll get this one off too and just check it out. All right, we got the other wheel off of here. You can see that magnet's working as well with the all wheel drive switch on. So this one's good to go as well. All right, we got it all back together here. Looking pretty good, cleaned it up a little bit. Cleaned up the seat, got the seat to latch. So this thing is looking pretty awesome. Um, I'm going to check out the brake fluid in there next because it's just not working that great. Oh yeah, she's dry as bone. Let's get some fluid in there. All right, front brake hardened right up. So that's working now perfectly. There. I think. We'll see if it gets harder. Okay, just crack that a little bit. You see fluid coming out. Try to get all the air bubbles out of it. All right, that back brake is not hardening up. It's not uh, bleeding correctly. Um, so I think there's something wrong with the actual caliper there, which a lot of players have bad calipers and it leaks. And um, then air gets by and it doesn't harden up like it should. But the front brake works, so at least we have one brake. I'm going to quick take it for test drive. I don't know if the 4x4 is going to work without the battery. I don't think it is because it needs to magnetize the front hubs in order to work. Um, and this battery, I was charging it, but it looks like it's looks like it's toast. It's blinking red. All right, now when we turn the key, that lights up. So we know, so now we've got the battery in there. Let's go test this thing out.
thing and run straight. All right, now we just have to get the plow on and a winch. All right, so I went everywhere in Watoma and they did not have a winch I could buy. Crazy, went to every hardware store, went to Ace Hardware, a local one on Main Street, O'Reilly's, Advanced Auto, nobody had a winch. So if you want to come to Watoma and sell winches, I bet you you do pretty good. I had to go all the way to Oshkosh to find this. So I bought a 2,500 pound Badlands winch. Vinny seems to like it a lot. Um, we got this. From, we got this thing from Harbor Freight, and then we got a couple zip ties. Got the hook for the plow, some bolts, stuff like that, and then a brand new battery. Hundred ten dollar battery from Batteries Plus, so that was expensive as well. Vinny seems to like all the stuff though, so that's all that matters. All right, so we gotta get the winch hooked up here. There is a mounting plate on it right here. Then, what do you think? You like the plow? It's like, that's not gonna be big enough. <laughs> okay, so there's a mounting plate. There is uh, four holes already in it. So hopefully they line up, otherwise we can drill some new ones in there. Then we just have to run the cables to the back and we should be good. All right, plow is all installed. Check this out. Got the remote up here, zip tied onto the bar. New battery in there, all good to go. All right, check this out. In. Oh yeah, this thing is ready to go. All right, let's go test it out. We got a ton of snow. I plowed half the driveway already. I left the other half for uh, this four-wheeler. But look at these drifts. I mean, that's more than a foot. It's probably like a foot and a half. And all this. So, quite a bit. All right, so far for a little 300, this thing's doing pretty good. Not too bad. You can see it's a little bit lighter than uh, the four strokes, so it kind of, if it gets stuck, it kind of 
takes a little bit more effort, but it moves through that snow pretty easily with the 4x4. Not too bad. I'm liking it. The plow is nice too. It gets a lot more snow than my other plow, but now and they're tall, I should say. So it's picking up a lot of snow. Yeah, it's pretty fun. Winch is working great. Thing's pretty cool. Not bad for 400 bucks. start oh the fans on you can see she's getting hot from plowing <laughs> four by four is working great though I've been putting it in low for plowing so I've been doing pretty good for low, we're going low here. See the 4x4 four four kicking on. I gotta get some good speed going into it. But so far, not bad. This is pretty deep snow. The out button likes to get stuck out, so you have to really make sure it doesn't, otherwise, it gets all bound up. That does pretty good, doesn't it? I was expecting it to do a lot worse than this, being so white. Look at that push that snow. For four hundred dollars. That's crazy. <laughs> Not a bad little wheeler, is she?
I'm gonna push this this way. That's some hefty stuff right there. No problem. Now we can go back and push it all that way. Guess we need this big pile right here too. I don't want to hit the car. It's pretty good. Not too bad. See how she does there. <laughs> this is some deep stuff. <laughs> That's all drifted snow. No problem. That's pretty cool. Oh, she got stuck. <laughs> Come on, baby. Punch that sucker. Well, the old Polaris did a pretty good job. I was not expecting that. Not too bad for a little 300 4 by 4 Thing runs great. Starts first pull every time now. Check this out. Everything is working on it great. 4x4 works awesome. Winch is working great. Plow is working great. So for 400 bucks, we got a pretty nice ATV. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the video on this thing. We got some plowing in. We got to fix up a crappy, crappy Polaris. <laughs> 
All the Polaris's I get are usually in pretty rough shape, but they always usually run. So, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Stay tuned for next one. And until next time, we are okay.